for another live stream on this um, very warm Sunday. Uh, if you're new here, my name is Eric, and every Sunday we have a live stream for teachers. If uh, Yeah, put your name in the comments down below. Tell me where you're from. And if you've got any questions or if you want to share anything, let me just get this mic right, about teaching or uh, especially about teaching English, feel free to put it in the comments down below. Um, yeah, everyone, my name is Eric. Uh, I'm a teacher and um, yeah, once a week, every week we have this live stream. So um, yeah, let's get started. Uh, first off, wow, we see Tamara. Tamara, thank you so much. So you can see that Tamara became a YouTube member. Um, and that is when you join the channel and you become a member. Um, so I, I so um, you get a, a couple of free bonuses, but I'll talk about that in a bit. And then we've got BM first, as always. Hi, Eric. Are you glad today or angry? Um, a little bit of a mix, BM. Yeah, um, I'm not angry at all. I, actually, I had a very relaxing day. Uh, I hope everyone can hear me well. What did I do? Um, I I did nothing today. I went shopping for groceries, came back home, made lunch. And then <laughs> it's been a while, but I started binge watching a new show. So actually this past week, oh, sorry, my hair's a mess. This past week, I was, um, I was busy editing a lot of videos nonstop. So I thought, okay, today will be my rest day. So I just relaxed and I watched a series. Um, I did make dinner. Is there a guest? No guest today, but I'll see maybe next week or the week after I'll have a new guest. And then we've got Bonnie Esther. Good morning, world teachers and our host, Eric. Sunny day here in Massachusetts. Yeah, it's very hot here in Korea. Uh, so this, um, so last month, I actually, I traveled to Thailand and I'm back now. So as you all can see, ooh, this is foot cream, hand cream. And where's my other pillow? My mom's going to kill me if I can't find the other pillow. Well, it's somewhere. I'll find the pillow. Um, yeah, so, um, but now I'm back in Korea and it's uh, it's really hot here. I just want to go back to the beach. Uh, I love being at the beach when it's so hot. I don't mind the summer at all. And um, let's see. My dad's here. Greetings from a windy cape. So you can see that my dad and Bonnie, Esther and Tamara are actually channel members. It's just to help out the channel. And I've been thinking, how can I help? Um, or what can I give back to the channel members that support me so well? And I think what I'll do or what I started doing is I've got a lot of videos ready. I've got almost 16 videos that I've already made um, for future use. And that will give me time to work on bigger videos and work on some, some courses. So I shot a lot of videos and now I'm editing very hard to get it out to you. And uh, I decided every week I will um, pr uh, I will release some of the videos early to members so members can watch them ahead of everyone else, like early access. And Mr. Firas, hi, everyone. Martin, hello, all looking forward to this live stream. Yeah, I, I feel a bit rusty. It's a, it's my first time back back home. Where is that fellow? It's, it's somewhere. Uh, it's my first time back home. And... Uh, and uh, yeah, so I'm not at my best, but it's so lovely to see everyone. Actually, I was thinking, so Bonnie Esther, as soon as I saw your uh, message, I remembered I want to show everyone. Uh, Bonnie Esther did these quick two impersonations of me and she sent it to me on Facebook. And I remember I saved it somewhere. So I'm looking for those those videos that she sent me because I really want to share it with you. She's so good at that. Let me see if I can find it. Barney Esther's. Uh, I went back onto Facebook to find it again, to download again. Ah, I can't find it. I need to find it. I want to show everyone her impersonation. Jacqueline, hi. I hope I said that right. Good morning, happy people. Um, Eric, you will have to do a special live stream. <laughs> Maybe. Yeah, Martin, I was thinking about what to do for, um, for reaching this milestone. And um, as you can see, my idea was to get people to send in videos. But I think that's a little bit unfair to put pressure on teachers who are already busy um, to do something with their students and to record it. So 
Um, yeah, I, I'd really, I really want to make that video, that compilation video about different cultures and, and get teachers and their students uh, and uh, a chance just to talk about their, their cultures and countries. But uh, I, I'm, I'm not sure that's going to work. So maybe as a countdown up to 100 subs, we can perhaps do a live stream. I think it'll take about two weeks maybe one to two weeks before we reach 100. Uh, BM, <laughs> BM, no guest. Oh, this is me that sent it to BM. But it's it's very strange. It's like I sent, I sent this, but it's sent under... I think that's just something weird that happened with this program I'm using. Shut out, please. <laughs> okay. Um, Januju. Hi, Raj from India. Uh, from Jordan. Hi, Muhammad. Odid from Indonesia. I saw two of my Indonesian friends meeting. I'm so happy to see that. By the way, guys, if you've got any questions, if there's something you want to talk about, especially if it comes to teaching or teaching English, please put it in the comments below. Uh, Mr. Faraz, hi. Marcos, good morning, genius. I don't know about genius, but um, I will take hard worker. That's, that's something that I'm doing. This past week, um, I've I've been back and um, every day I've been going to uh, I've 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 um, I've got this study cafe. It's just white walls around me, and I go inside with this laptop in front of me and I just edit videos. So I'm at 16 videos now. I think I've got about eight videos that I've got left to edit, and it's just about classroom games. It's just classroom activities. Um, so I, I don't know if you guys are going to like it or not, but um, a couple of a month, almost two months ago, I went um, and I shot some videos with students and did some activities with them. Uh, the problem is that um, the way that I used the camera, it was so difficult to teach and to record at the same time. So a lot of the the, the footage didn't come out very well. So, you, um, But I think I'm just trying to edit it and get it to work. So we'll see how that goes. Um, you promised to make demos with, where are they? Um, I, so what I'm doing right now is I'm going to finish all the editing for these videos and then um, I'm going to work on some videos that I've promised before, like how to teach young learners, attention getters, and then I want to do uh, a course. So many videos on uh, how to write a resume, how to make a demo video, uh, interview tips, um, uh, questions that you'll get in an interview. So all these things. Oh, oh, and how to introduce yourself to class and how to teach your students to introduce themselves in class. So yeah, those are videos that I'm going to make. But obviously, I need more time because the, the research time it takes to find all the information and to write it out takes a long time. But now that I've got videos, I don't have to worry about creating videos and I can just write out those scripts. So maybe not soon, but at some time. Grant, good to see you. Hope you're doing well. Ed Wise, hello. I truly love your videos. Thank you so much. Uh, English with Joe, uh, do you prefer teaching adults or kids? I prefer teaching young adults. So yeah, I, I, um, you know, because uh, they've got all these experiences and excitement and and but they've also got these experiences to lean on. They're also easier to manage. However, I, I found... So when I went to to shoot these videos with some kids, um, I really enjoyed being with with kids again. You know, I, I think it's important for teachers to 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 try and practice with all different age groups. You know, because sometimes we can get a bit rusty in one age group, and then you know, uh, there there are benefits to both, and there are also challenges to both. So I, I think it it really helps doing both. By the way, um, in two weeks' time, so I teach at university. So, uh, uh, but um, my university asked me. They said there, there's a there's a high school that needs needs a teacher to go in for a couple of weeks and teach there. So I will also. Uh, so besides my university classes, I will also go and help out at a high school. Uh, so that might be interesting. I'm going to create a quick curriculum, help them with some things. So that might be interesting. Um, see what we get. Ta-da, Kai. Thank you. You're so kind. I love doing nothing. See, Grant, it's getting more and more difficult for me just to do nothing. Um, I, I like having things to do, but I feel maybe it, it is a mistake. Uh, recently, I've just been trying to keep my mind occupied and busy. So in the past, I would take 10 minutes to just uh, meditate or, or um, I would go to the gym and for an hour, I would just exercise without any distractions, without music or 
or watching something. Um, and But now, for some reason, I just feel like I don't want to be alone with my thoughts. It, it sounds a bit strange, but um, I, I know I should switch off at some point. It's the best for me. But um, yeah, right now I'm just trying to stay busy. Martin, uh, what is that drink on the shelf behind you? It looks quite interesting, especially those trophies. Yeah, my kickboxing trophies. Uh, the drink, uh, this one over here. Uh, I was promising uh, some of the viewers. So this is Amarula. It's a it's an alcoholic cream. It doesn't have a lot of alcohol in it. It's similar to Bailey's, um, but it's got a distinct taste because it comes from the Amarula fruit in Africa. Okay, well, it's got 17%. Um, but, uh, you know, you can make a lot of interesting drinks with this, but it's mainly for desserts, you know. So if you want something sweet afterwards. <laughs> I need to tidy up that <laughs> over there. Um, yeah, and what else? Oh, uh, what show did you binge? Uh, good question. So I like to, if there's like a, a, a popular show, I like to go in and see what it's all about. And the show I've started binging, I'm still on the first season because it's actually really good. I, I enjoyed it. The reason I didn't watch it when it first came out is because I saw some gory scenes. And I don't really enjoy those. I, I don't enjoy gore or horror or anything. And this show is called The Boys. So it does have some, some violence in it. But uh, so far, I, I, I enjoy the story and also the characters being revealed. You know, um, I, I like that. Salma, how are you doing? <laughs> glad to see you so far. Yeah, I'm also glad to see it. But uh, the more and more I think about it, I really need a change. So I'll look towards moving soon. Hello, Marcos. Great teacher. Born one, cut out for teacher. I think so. Thank you, Marcos. Yeah, um, maybe I am cut out for teacher. I was, I was thinking about it earlier. You know, I think most teachers, what we are is, oh, what's that word again? Um, uh, not, it's like being affable. Um, but uh, it's, it's easy for us to get along with people. Um, I don't want to say, yeah, it's, it's, um, I, I'll think about it. There's a word I wanted to use, but yeah, for most teachers, I, I think, um, we're easy to get along with and, uh, uh, we're very empathetic, I believe too. So that's something I have some, in some cases, I wish I was, um, uh, it's not, it's not a people pleaser, but I, I wish I, I was, um, as, sometimes I wish my personality were a bit different, but you know, uh, what can we do? Uh, Abdul, what time is it now? It is now 10.12. And this, this <laughs> comment only came out at 10.2. So I'm 10 minutes behind. Letty, hi everyone from Sueta, Spain. My summer holidays finish tomorrow. You need a haircut. Letty, let me tell you, you can read my mind. Um, I was going to tell you that tomorrow I'm going to get a haircut. So I'm going to cut my hair very short. Um, uh, so, yeah, this is the last time you're going to see me with my messy hair. And for you, BM, I did shave because last week you said I had like a five o'clock shadow. So right before this, I quickly shaved um, no, uh, so that I don't have any anything, any hair on my face. But, yeah, I'm going to cut my hair tomorrow, get my sporty look back. Uh, and then I'm going to grow it out again because I've got an idea for Halloween. And I know you're thinking, Eric, it's too soon to be thinking about Halloween, but I, I want to grow my hair out for that. Uh, Martin says, I heard that there were lots of rain in Korea with some people passing away in the floods in those semi-basement apartments. Yeah, it's it's been really rough, especially right as I arrived from, um, from Thailand. Um, um, a lot of rain, and I think about eight people passed away, unfortunately. Um, yeah, but uh, I, I think it's 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 uh, in the south of Korea, it was a bit drier, I believe. But now that I'm here, things are still very hot. There is some intermittent rain, but it's um, it's not too bad anymore. Thank you for for um, mentioning that, uh, Martin. <clears throat> MC Donna, hi, good evening. Uh, please, which level would you teach? Uh, already answered. Yeah, more videos. <laughs> Nicest touch. Top of the morning to you. I'm from South Sudan. What a, what a nice um, hello. Thank you, Matt. Uh, last streams. Hello, afternoon. I'm really happy to follow you. Thank you. God bless you. Thank you, last streams. I watch a lot of teachers, teachers in Korea, and they have horrible experiences with students. They say this. No, 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 no. Um, 
students are the same all over the world. I've had um, other teachers tell me, Eric, uh, you know, some of the activities won't work in the Middle East. But um, listen, kids are the same everywhere. Um, you're going to, although um, I wouldn't say there are much, uh, there are large differences between countries. But um, obviously, the way that they are brought up at home and also, you know, their environment, uh, if if they come from a tough neighborhood, you know, the kids are going to be much more difficult perhaps to deal with. But I wouldn't say there's a difference between countries, you know, or cultures. I feel like kids are kids and the way that we can reach them and engage them, I think it's the same. Yeah. Um, no, Korean kids are <clears throat> are fine. Uh, they uh, But in South Africa, I've, I've had really good students and I've had some poorer students. And in Korea, generally, um, they're quite strict. So the, there are some bad kids and there are some really nice kids. So no, I, I can't say that that is much different, uh, BM. I'm nude. Uh, you're good. Hi, good morning from Saudi Arabia. Hi, I'm excellent. Uh, the British... <laughs> uh, it, uh, sorry, Wakas, I can't bring up... Um... Oh, uh, by the way, tomorrow is India's Independence Day, isn't it? I think so. Congratulations to, uh, well, congratulations. No, um, yeah, happy uh, uh, um, Independence Day to all my Indian viewers for tomorrow. Um, actually, I did an Independence Day video for um, for the US. Uh, that video didn't do very well. So I'm thinking of making, maybe next year, I'll make one for uh, India's uh, Independence Day. Udwa, hi. Tazia, good to see you again. Lovely to have you back. PM. Uh, why have you said the usual uh, phrase that all <laughs> give a thumbs up and why do you, uh, what's the secret? Well, actually, uh, well, so one of my hobbies obviously is YouTube. So I do a lot of research and I watch a lot of videos on how to grow on YouTube, you know, to get tips and to improve. And um, they do say that if you say like and subscribe, um, it, it does feel like a cliche, but it does work. More people like and subscribe. But my philosophy when it comes to YouTube is I just want to give out good content and information. So in my videos, I don't often use sounds or music. Um, I, I thought about using it, but it's because I constantly talk. Um, I do put in, um, you know, B-roll. B-roll is like extra videos and I try and put in images. I try to make it fun, but it's just me talking, trying to get information out there. And if I have to say, sometimes I say like and subscribe in some of the videos if I feel like uh, if I feel like it. But usually, you know, as long as it gets out to the teachers and it helps someone, I'm I'm fine with that. Uh, Samuel Eritrean, hi, hi, hello from Thailand. Oh, hi, I just left you, and I see all my friends that I made in Thailand having such a nice time. I'm I'm very jealous. I already miss it. Um, but it's funny, um, I ate so much in Thailand and I really enjoyed it. Um, and I missed Korean food, but as soon as I got back, I wasn't in the mood for anything. I, um, I don't, I rarely cook. I'm not a good cook, but uh, today I just went and bought some meats, put on some rice and some veggies, and I was just in the mood to eat that. And I think from next week, I'm just going to drink some smoothies or something. But uh, yeah, a very interesting time. I'm Zol. Hi, teacher. Dude, Hello, my friend. Good to see you. Dude, Don. Sorry, Dude, Don. Um, uh, Maya Tao. Hi from uh, Ecuador. Uh, Marwa, thank you very much for your valuable videos and your pressure. My question is all about how to teach grammar in an exciting and appealing way. Um, yeah, okay. Well, it's important for the students to understand. So use a lot of examples from their lives and also make it just make it interesting to them. You know, um, if you teach something, whatever you're teaching, if it's grammar, wh whatever it is, you know, you've got to do it in a way that uh, the students can find fun or interesting or engaging and use them as examples. So let's say, you know, you're, you're, um, you're using the present continuous tense. You're like, okay, this is something that I'm doing at the moment or right now. And then you say, okay, what am I doing right now? And, and they can say, I'm walking. And then, um, you know, you're picking something up. You know, I'm not saying you have to be a clown, but engage them. And then um, you can give them cards and each student has to act it out. And the others have to go around and kind of guess what they're doing. And then you bring in the grammar with it. You say, okay, well, if it's only one person, so they are two people and you wrote down, they've got to, um, you know, act like they're playing violin. 
you know. So um, they are playing by Lin. And so you, you train the students like that and then you challenge them to give their own examples. Uh, you can go old school and give them a list of, uh, of sentences to use, but that should come at the end. Um, uh, when you first start teaching it, it should be... Um, it should be tangible. It should be engaging. It should be something that that they can see and feel and uh, and and um, uh, find interesting. And then once you've done that and you've done some examples, then you can give them some problems that they can do on their own. But yeah, so it's very important to um, yeah just make it engaging and fun for them. Um, I will make some videos in the future, but I think that's going to be next year about how to teach grammar. I'm I'm excited to do that, but. Yeah, uh, a lot of things to get before that. Abdullah, hi, how are you? Uh, Andrew, hi, it's a cute. <laughs> wow, what a nice thing to say, Andrew. Uh, it's a cute. I like that. Thank you. Uh, with Korean young learners are so heartwarming. They are funny and cheeky. I want to get right something to on the board and not thinking I could could not uh, i could read it oh that's so nice yeah um, um martin you must uh, also miss your time here martin was also here in korea it's uh, yeah it's really nice okay grant what do you think i'm the complete opposite in my experience children take learning more seriously uh yeah maybe um it it depends you know if if you're an adult and you take classes and you pay for those classes i think you'll be kind of serious about how hard you study you know, you're, you're going to prepare for those classes because it comes out of your own pocket. Whereas kids, it's just, it's expected of them, right? Uh, their parents put pressure on them. Um, but yeah, it's, uh, I think when you're an adult and you pay, maybe you do it more. Um, I also prefer teaching kids. Hi, Precious. Lovely to see you. How's your boxing going? Okay. Now, um, if you guys haven't seen on Instagram, I put out my two fights. Uh, I'm going to show you something. Um, my boxing, uh, those two fights were a month ago and everything went fine, had the fights. And then immediately after that, um, so I injured my finger and I thought, okay, well, it's just a sprain. It's just something small. Uh, I, I injured my finger and, and I couldn't go to the doctor because uh, to check it out because I was already going to Thailand. And I thought in Thailand, well, you know, I'll just give it time to heal. Uh, and then it still didn't heal. It was still swollen, uh, my finger. I don't know if I should show you or not. Anyway, so um, <laughs> uh, I came back to Korea and uh, finally went to the doctor because I had the time. And the doctor, uh, well, first I went to like, um, uh, 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 not a herbal doctor, a traditional a traditional healer. But in Korea, the, the, uh, the, um, the traditional healers are like, they, they are very much like doctors. But they use acu, uh, uh, you know, acupuncture and so so they and herbs and things. But they also they they also have to study and it's it's not just traditional healing like you know some uh, where it's it's uh, yeah it's very professional. Anyway, I went there first and he took a look at it and he said, Eric, I think you need to get an X-ray. And I said, okay. Um, that, uh, by the way, that was my first time going to a traditional doctor. Uh, I, I took a friend uh, and I was there, so I just went in. And then after that, I went to the orthopedist and um, I said, okay, well, I think I need to get like a scan. And they took an x-ray and basically, okay, you can see here, it doesn't look that bad before, but the whole month it was swollen. Basically, uh, the bone broke off. In one of my punches, I punched and this finger kind of, so you hold your hand like this, right? But this middle finger came out and I punched and it went down against this hand and basically, this bone broke off, and it's there. So now I'm going to a hospital on Tuesday. Um, going to see a, a big uh, my university hospital, and they're going to check it out. And I think maybe the same day, maybe during the week, they're going to schedule me for surgery and maybe put in a pin or something. Anyway, uh, guys, I thought I'd share that. <laughs> Uh, adults like top just leaves me unmotivated. Yeah, that's kind of tough. I can see uh, that, Grant. Um, uh, yeah, uh, so I teach university students, and their whole thing is they just need to get through the classes. But um, I do want them to have fun and to learn and to try things. The high school gig sounds fun. Yeah, I'm excited. I haven't taught high school in a uh, in a while. You know, I used to teach high school for a couple of years, so um, I'm excited to see the kids. You know.
um, do tech, please guide me. Um, I'm not sure how I can ha help you, Owa. Coming back to teaching after 20 years. Oh, sorry, I was reading here. I'll try and read here. Uh, you made the educational feel wonderful for me. You have changed my life. One question. Can you tell by watching kids if they got it? Yes, yes. Um, you know, um, there's definitely a sense if the kids got it or not. But you still have to double check. You know, that's why we ask these questions. When I teach something, uh, I repeat myself often. And I also ask clarifying questions. I ask the students to, to um, you know, to repeat some sentences just to check their understanding. But you can't ask everyone. But you can see some students that, oh, they've got it, they're on task. And then sometimes, you know, they kind of look around or they, they start. And even then, they can make mistakes. Sometimes, you, you, you know, you, you tell the students to do something and someone might have some idea. It's not their first language when they get instructions. So you've got to be clear and you've got to give them some examples. And even then, I would walk around and then ask the students questions. And I would start with the, the students I think need, need it the most. Although, um, you know, when it comes to, uh, when it comes to, I, I was reading, uh, I was reading this book about classroom management. And it mentioned that one of the, the, the biggest problems that teachers have is sometimes you get students that, um, even though they can understand the process of what they have to do, they will just, they want the teacher's help. Um, or they want the teacher's, not their help, but their attention. And if you give them too much attention, it stops you from checking in with the rest of the, the class. So that is something important to think about is, yes, walk around, help the individual students, make sure they get it. But also be aware that some students will ask you for help, even if you explained exactly what they have to do, right? And then when you help those individual students, don't drag it on. Don't help them from the start. Just say, okay, just scan through and say, okay, um, I want you to just look at this and this and try it first and then come back to me. Otherwise, if you sit there and you have to do everything with them from the start, um, I, I don't think it's fair to yourself, and it's also going to kind of cause a problem with classroom management. Uh, Husu, hello, not sponsored. Uh, hello from Russia, Maya. I'm uh, I'm a Waldorf school newbie teacher. Wow, hi, Maya. Uh, are you excited? Are you ready? Um, yeah, um, I really hope to visit uh, uh, Eastern Europe. One of my friends just went to Poland. I saw all the photos. Look so nice. Uh, I don't know. <laughs> Please don't. Just, uh, BM, I cannot make that promise. This sofa is so old. It's not that comfortable to lie on. It's too... It, I can't make that promise. Uh, but in the future, when I do get a new apartment, I'll make sure it's very pretty. I'll put in lights. And uh, yeah, it'll just be a better experience for us all. Uh, Levito, very nice. My name is Levito uh, from Mozambique. I'm a younger student of English. I'm liking this program. Thank you, Levito. It's lovely to have you. Uh, Tafik. Tofik, nice. Hi, Mutaim. Hello, um, Mutaim. Consider this channel, Raja. What's up? Uh, not much. Um, just um, excited. I've got a couple of weeks left before the university starts again. Um, so yeah, I'm just uh, getting, just getting my classes in order, getting ready for that, and just uh, making a lot of videos things that I have to do. Hello, Jewel. Hi, everyone from Myanmar. Hello, Priti. Good to see you again. Thank you, Eric. Uh, Sazia. Hi from Turkey. Merhaba. Shanghai Tom. What a cool name. Good evening from Shanghai. Oh, you know what? I saw, um, I met some, some um, people from Shanghai before, um, some travelers uh, two or three years ago, maybe three years ago. And uh, yeah, it, um, since I added them on Instagram, it, ju it just uh, it looks like such a metropolitan. It just looks like such an interesting city to live in. You know, um, I'm very curious about it. Uh, Edward, today is Independence Day in Pakistan. I don't know. Congratulations, lovely pa uh, Independence Day. Then I didn't see that. Uh, Amy, hi from Egypt. Mario, hola, hi Mario. How are you doing? Good to see you. Wow, Mario. Uh, I've uh, Mario has been one of the long viewers of the channel. I always like seeing Mario. Uh, Chen, I think it's Chen. Hello, sir. Hi, Chen. Um, 
And then happy Independence Day to Pakistanis. Oh, very nice. That's a good message. Kairul, hi from Malaysia. Last dreams from Syria, Damascus. So happy to educate and practice your methods. Really useful. I'm so happy. Uh, yeah, so what's going to come out in the next few weeks? So, yeah, I've got about 16 videos ready. And I'm, I've got about 8 to 10 still to make. And I was considering bringing out two videos a month. Right. So that would last at least, uh, I guess, two months if, if I brought out all the videos. So for two months, uh, I don't have to do anything. Uh, two videos a week, but uh, like on a Tuesday and a Thursday, release some videos. But I'm, I'm, um, most of them are just activity videos. So the next three are teacher tips and then there are just activities. And I think you guys might enjoy those activity videos. Um, but. I need time to work on all the other videos I need to create. So if I only continue to put out one a week, that's at least four months I have that I can work. So I'll think about it. I'll consider putting out more. Uh, Gloria, hello from Honduras. Uh, BM, why are all students learning English language facing difficulties with writing more than speaking or reading? And many teachers don't like to teach writing. I mean, writing paragraphs. That is a very interesting question. Now, um, we've got some great writing teachers. Um, uh, I know Paul. Um, Paul is a great teacher of writing. For myself, um, I haven't taught writing in a long time because um, my job right now and my job for the past couple of years has only been to, to help the students with speaking or communication, which doesn't include writing. Um, uh, but when I taught in South Africa and I taught primary school, obviously I had to help the students more with writing essays and paragraphs and letters and such. Um, now, that's a good question. Why do students find it difficult? Um, I don't think it's true. I think it depends where you're from. Because in countries like Korea, for example, students are more shy and have greater difficulty with speaking. But their writing and their grammar and their test scores are amazing, you know, because they study and they've got these methods that they can learn. But when it comes to speaking, because most of their teachers are Korean teachers that teach English, they are not comfortable teaching speaking. So the students also struggle to to um, work on their speaking, you know, they, and they're also shy. You know, um, uh, they, there's this one girl that... Um, uh, when I when I did my kickboxing, there's this one girl there, and I spoke to her when I first got there, and her English was great. She was studying up in Seoul, but then you know because if if you stand out, uh, her English was great, but then because of how the Koreans function, they it's almost like she was bullied or she's not part of that social group anymore. So. Even if you are really good at English, a lot of Koreans don't want to show off in front of their friends. And she got kind of shy about it. Uh, she stopped speaking to me in English in front of her friends. She would just only speak to me in Korean. And I thought it's very sad, you know, and I told her, listen, uh, I know you understand, man. I know you can speak better. Uh, don't be shy to, to talk to me um, when your friends aren't there, you know, um, it, yeah, don't be shy. But for many Korean students, you know, that so their speaking suffer because they don't want to stand out. It's, it's about being modest. Um, and then when you go to other countries, let's say you go to the Philippines, where they're so good at speaking English, but perhaps they, 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 they watch lots of movies and they sing lots of songs and they use English constantly. But when it comes to writing, it might be suffering. Now, what, another question you have when it comes to it is why is it more difficult for some teachers to teach writing? I think um, there's a lot to learn when it comes to writing and it, and it also takes a long time. The one thing I'm very grateful for is that I don't have these essays that I have to mark anymore. When I was teaching in South Africa, you know, the students would write tests or they would write essays and you would have 200 papers that you have to go through and read and write. I would sit in front of the TV and just mark, grade, 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 mark, and co make corrections. And uh, so I don't have that anymore, but I still think it's a valuable skill uh, to teach. Um, I would actually like to do something more like that too. Eric, uh, are you tempted to try out a walking, talking vlog style of video at all? It would be nice to see what is around your neighborhood. Uh, by the way, guys, check out Martin's channel. Martin did a couple of videos of that, like a, a, a vlogging and a, a vlog and walking around. Um, Martin, 
I've tried it. When I first started the channel, I tried some kind of vlogs just to get an experience of it. But I don't feel like my audience, um, maybe some like for the live stream might be interested in uh, what's going around in my life. But most people just come to the channel for information or games or activities or tips. So, uh, and, um, you know, so even though I'm the face of the channel, I don't think it really matters where I am as long as I can provide value. So I'm not sure I'll think about it, but um, I'm, I'm not sure. I've got so many other videos I still need to make. And it's, you know, like, for example, when I went out and I shot these videos of me in class, I was so stressed because I had to teach and the teaching part was fun. So it was I had to teach nonstop for five hours, um, like uh, maybe eight different classes. And so I taught nonstop. I had to figure out the camera. I had to figure out the sound. Um, I also had to teach. And, uh, you know, it, it, it was it was kind of nerve wracking having to do the shooting. So that was difficult. In the future, I will do it more. And I've got some ideas for interesting videos I want to make. But for now, I'm just going to stick to what works. And that is just these, these um, you know, these uh, face videos, these informative videos. Uh, uh, they call them talking head videos. Uh, Tasia, I'd like to work in Thailand. Would you mind sharing your experience? Well, I was just there as a traveler. Um, but um, it looked really interesting. I spoke to some teachers that work there. Um, yeah, I think it's it's uh, the weather is nice and warm. Um, the students are there to learn. I, I don't know. I can't give you any any tips or anything about how, the work conditions, unfortunately. But uh, from what I found is, um, yeah, the students are nice and um, it's it's a nice place to work and live and eat. Um, um, maybe the I'm I'm not sure about how much you can get paid. But I think it, it'll be a nice place to work at. Uh, I wouldn't mind. I know a lot of people uh, People move there. So um, let's say, I, yeah, I don't know. I, I'd like to live somewhere near the beach. I like swimming. Maybe I'd go there in the future. Walter, greeting from Mexico. Hi, teams. How's it going? Good, thank you. Amal, how can I be a good science teach, a teacher? Um, I think master your, your subject. And also teach it in an interesting way and give students uh, an opportunity to, to uh, use whatever they're learning in a physical capacity, if possible. You know, because science is, uh, you know, what, what is it, the, the science of the world, you know, it, it should be more physical and they should be able to see it um, uh, if, if it's possible. Esther, I'm teaching EFL to beginners in their first on-site class. Do we have... Um, no, I think uh, try and use as much English as possible. Uh, I think that's the main rule. Um, so, uh, with my classes, I like that uh, sometimes I use a little bit of the native language just to make it fun or interesting. But in mo most cases, the more English you use, the better. Dandar, hi from Myanmar. Maya, question from Russia. Teachers in use uh, to call students pupils. Yeah, in the 2000s. Okay. Um, now I'd say that uh, the word is, but in Cambridge books, I see pupils word used a lot. I haven't used pupils in a long time. Yeah, I think I think that's, that is kind of an old fashioned thing to say. Now we say students, we say learners. I haven't said pupil, I haven't said pupils in a long time. Although I think it, uh, uh, Martin, uh, is it, is it more British thing? Because in South Africa, we also say pupils, um, but I haven't used that in a long time. Cambridge is obviously British, you know, so maybe it's 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 more you know British English than American. I don't think I I don't believe in um, the U.S. English. They they use pupils a lot, right? I'm just guessing. Uh, Martin, students informal, pupils formal. Thank you, Martin. I should have read this before I carried on. Some extraordinary students who are good in IQ tend to be rude in class with the teacher non-verbally by showing disinterested faces. How to deal with such students? Students that are really good. Hmm. Um, sorry, guys. Very thirsty. Hmm. Students that are very smart, high IQ, are disinterested. Well, um, yeah, I, I think... I feel like I'm just I'm saying the same thing. Yeah, engage the students, make it about them, and challenge them. You know, if they are very smart, 
um, I like to give them a platform to show off how smart they are. You know, so if they are very smart, uh, I would say, okay, well, I would give them tougher questions that they can answer fully. So let's say you're working and you're you're teaching the students something. Engage the students. Say, oh, well, so and so, what is your opinion on this? What do you think about this? Do you know like, uh, uh, and then ask him something interesting that gets him to to show off a little bit. Why not? You know. Um, so instead of just looking down, uh, looking at those students giving you like a disinterested face, be like, okay, you, you, you want this platform? I'm going to give it to you. And then, yeah, just make them part of class. You know, I think that's something we can do. Mart, uh, I mean, Paul, I said Martin. Paul, how are you doing? Hardboiled English with your grammar detective. I like that. So, um, yeah, um, Paul is really good at uh, teaching writing and grammar too. Two of my... I won't say we yeah weaknesses or um not my strengths. <laughs> they're not my weaknesses, they're just not my strengths. <laughs> Almi, we need to celebrate with your Amarula that behind you. Okay, Almi, you know this. Yeah, maybe uh for the hundredth uh, for the hundredth, uh when we get close to a hundred, I'll do a special live stream to go into a, a getting a hundred thousand and I'll have some Amarula, yeah. Um Dahin, hello. I hope you're enjoying your holiday. Top five points which need to be mentioned during an interview. How to impress and eventually get the job. Um, yeah, do research about um, about the school. If you can find out anything about the school before that, bring it up in the interview. Ask good questions about what they would like to see. What is a successful teacher? Um, uh, if, if they give you a chance to ask questions, ask them what they see as a successful teacher or wh what do they imagine a successful teacher doing at that school. Um, and then also what I like to take is I like to take a notepad and then um, uh, I, if um, it, it, it keeps your hands busy. And also if they ask you a question, I like to make notes while they're asking the question because usually the, the question can be a bit long winded. So you make notes as they say it. And sometimes I write down some words that are or expressions or things that I was thinking about because as you're answering, you might forget, oh, I wanted, you know, I wanted to put this in. And then you can, you've got those notes while, while they were asking the question. And you can also repeat the question back at them. Um, and then um, a focus, um, I think a good idea to do is, um, my dad actually, where is that? Dad, you wrote an article about it on the It to Teach site. Uh, my dad, oh, how to answer teaching interview questions. I'm going to share this with you. My dad actually wrote this. And one of the things he says is to generate a story toolbox. The secret in having your own met metaphorical story toolbox. Okay, so you should have some stories. They're going to ask you um, because they want to know if you're like a good teacher. They're going to ask you questions. And if you have some stories that you have prepared that you can use to give as examples of how you teach. So they're going to say, okay, well, um, how do you deal with classroom management? If you can give your answer in a story format with yourself as the leading protagonist, the, the, the hero, then they're going to imagine you in that situation. And it's also, you know, it's easier to understand things in a story. Or if they say, well, how do you teach in class? So uh, what, what is your teaching style? Then, obviously, you can tell them what it's like. You, you give them some examples uh, or, or you, you tell them how you teach. But you can also do it in a story, a story format where you can say, well, actually, I was teaching two weeks ago and we started class doing this. And it was such a fun, engaging way to get the students busy. And then we transitioned and we did this activity. And, you know, actually, some of the students came back and they really enjoyed that activity. So now... They can imagine you in that role as a teacher already. They don't think, okay, you're just someone that gives them facts. You're actually giving them stories with you as the year in them. That, yeah, so that's also a really good thing to do. Um, what was the other thing? I think my dad mentioned something else. Where is that? Uh, be the champion in the story. Uh, yeah. Um, yeah, give unique answers. Uh, yeah, so try not to memorize everything, but if you have some examples that you have memorized, I think it's okay. I'm going to paste this in here. This is my dad's article, how to answer teaching interview questions. Um, I I will actually, I, when I'm doing this, uh, this course, I'm going to delve into that and I'm going to write my articles. Uh, Metzalem. 
Hi, Ian. Hi, teacher. Warm greetings. Hi, thank you, Ian. I'm so sad I didn't go to Indonesia. Ah, actually, by the way, guys, uh, the words we use, um, it's so important because I noticed something. I tend to say, uh, I tend to use a lot of negative language with myself. So I, I, I would say a lot of, oh, I should have. I should have done this. Oh, it's too bad this didn't happen. I should have done this. Because, you know, I can be really rough on myself about, oh, uh, you know, things I do. And it's so negative when I, uh, because I realize that every second sentence while I'm walking around, I would say, oh, man, I should have prepared this. I should have done this. I should have put on suntan lotion or, you know, I, I should have. And th that is such a negative mindset. And I'm trying to work on it, but it's difficult because, you know, for how many odd years I've been doing that. Um, so think about the way that you talk to yourself. What language do you use? And try and use more positive language because it's going to have, um, well, it's going to have a better, it's going to have an, a, a positive effect on your mind. Uh, hello, Preeti. Likewise, Eric. I was saying thank you for wishing us Indians Happy Independence Day tomorrow. Nice. Yeah, uh, uh, next year I'll definitely make that video on in, um, the uh, Indians, uh, India's Independence Day. Uh, hi, Muhammad from Sudan. Really appreciate your performance. Thank you. Uh, Paul says here, thank you for mentioning me, Eric. Yes, I teach writing in private ses sessions and my online course. Very interesting. Check out um, uh, Paul's channel, Hard Boiled English, also on Facebook. Very, very prominent. Gloria, I want to know if you have a web page for warm-up activities. I believe I do. And let me see what I've got here for you. English, resources, ESL activities. Uh, I'm going to share that with you. But in a couple of weeks, maybe uh, three or four weeks, I'm going to... I'm going to bring out a lot more activities. Uh, now, this is the website, and it's got like a lot of activities in there that you can check out. Oh, and here is also the 52 uh, games. I actually, I've got it down here. I'm going to post that one too. Uh, a lot of uh, website uh, web pages I'm sharing. Uh, Kadish, how are you doing? One of the kindest people. I'm doing fine, thank you, Kadish. Uh, Muhammad, good evening. Uh, do you know uh, the British teacher Lucy? She's a YouTuber channel. She gets more than eight million subscribers. Yes, everybody knows Lucy, lovely Lucy. Yeah. Um, well, from a professional point of view, I think she's grown a lot and deservedly show. So I also think she's got a she's got a company behind her that she, she uh, she's brought out a lot of a lot more courses, and I think she's built a team to support her. So I think she was around a million or something or two million, and she did her thing. But then she just skyrocketed. I think she she built a team. Maybe in the future I should build a team, but right now it's just me and my dad helping me out and, and also Bonnie Esther also helping out with some live streams. Uh, I agree whether a student is better at speaking or writing varies. Writing also has a higher obligation for clarity and precision, right, than speaking does because you can't ask a writer to repeat. Very true. Great point, um, Paul. Writing skills also grow from reading. Uh, I find that students these days read less. Yeah, um, I, I feel that definitely. Um, I I haven't been reading as much as I should have. I, I'm, I'm, I'm so busy with this book. I read a little bit more. I think I'm, where am I? More than halfway. Uh, yeah, well, halfway. I'm so bad. I need to read this, but I just try and stay busy the whole time. Students in Korea seem to suffer in silence rather than remove the emotional and mental baggage and just communicate. I found Koreans are more judgmental in our mind. They shouldn't be, definitely. Uh, Mario says, nice teacher. Eric, you are spot on. Many teachers avoid the extra work involved in marking papers because it's unpaid work. Yeah, um, I can see that happening. And I, I think a lot of teachers are just asking the students to do it, you know, on Word where, you know, you've got um, corrections on there, grammar correction, and, you know, uh, you won't have typos that you have to check out. Um, how many hours do you teach a week? What is the standard rate? Uh, well, I teach at the university, so we get the same amount of classes. So it's not really an hour, an hourly rate. Uh, 
Azafi, good afternoon from Morocco. Uh, hi from Oksana from Ukraine. Nice to see you, Oksana. Suad, uh, hi, Eric. How long before the start of the school year do you usually start prepping your lessons? Also, I'm looking for ways to improve my writing on the board. Any advice on... Oof. <laughs> um, uh, Suad, um, well, I've, I've taught these classes a million times, so I know what I have to do, but I like to actually from next week, so two weeks before the semester starts, I like to prepare my curriculum and make sure all the lessons are planned, sometimes earlier, but because I've done it before, you know, I've already got all that information, so it's not really that necessary, but I try and adapt it and bring in new activities and improve. Every every semester, I try to improve what I, what was done before, right? I think that most teachers want to. When it comes to writing on the board, um, I would say my writing on the board isn't that nice either. When I write on the board, it's very wild. It's it's I don't have a nice uh, board handwriting style. But um, I would say slow down and be more uh, thoughtful of how you write. So if you're going to slow down and you're going to focus on precision and on being more neat, it will show. So if you can do more writing before the students get in, if you can write down some things that they need to see before class starts, uh, that will help you too so that you don't have to do it in class. Um, but yeah, no, it takes time to, to get that right. Students is more common in North America, I agree. Iman, hello from Egypt. I'm an IB teacher and I need to evaluate, uh, alleviate the questions that are asked my students in the classroom. I hope to know conceptual questions. Um, yeah, I think, you know, just uh, checking their understanding and challenging them is important. Uh, do you speak Korean easily? Uh, no, um, actually, my Korean is very basic. I can have like a conversation on basic things and I can get around. But uh, in the past, it was a priority of mine, uh, um, working on Korean and improving. But these days, I can just get by and I don't study at all. And also, I don't use it a lot, you know. Um, I think if I, if I used it more often, but because now when I – most of my friends are English and even my Korean friends speak to me in, in English um, – yeah, so there's no need for me, and I understand the basics so I can get around. Um, yeah, I'm not sure if I'm going to stay in Korea my whole life. Who knows, you know? So that's another thing. Well, I think that's just an excuse not to study. But, uh, yeah, my Korean is okay, but it's I'm not doing much with it. Uh, Susu, hi from Myanmar. Good to see you again, Susu. Uh, Awatif uh, from Sudan. In Asian languages like Turkish and Japanese, sample sentence, uh, subject, object, verb, a European subject, object, verb. Is it re uh, Yes, that's one of the reasons why it's easier for them to work it that way. Definitely. That's, uh, that's definitely one of the reasons why it's difficult for them. Uh, so, for example, in English, you can say, I eat an apple. And in Korean, it would be sagwa mo uh, mogoyo. Uh, uh, sagwa mogo. Mogoyo. Uh, because you don't need to say I in Korean. You just say, you just leave that out. It's um, uh, unless you, you say he eats or, you, you know, it's unnecessary actually to use those pronouns in, in Korean unless you, you want to be very direct. So you just say apple is being eaten, you know. Um, Jospin, hi, good morning. Oh, this is me. Uh, performed as part of a mentoring session. Uh, that's a good idea. I haven't thought about it, Najma. Mentoring, I was thinking about doing some videos on it, uh, but I haven't really gotten to it, but I'll think about it. Uh, Aisa, hi, Mr. Eric. Uh, I hope you're doing well. What topic? Uh, just anything we want to talk about. We've got like five minutes left. Can't believe it. Another live stream almost done. I'll try and get a guest for next week or the week after. You guys must be getting bored of me. Is there a dress code in your school? And is it co-education mixed boys and girls? Yes, it is mixed. Um, and no, there isn't a dress code. But, um, you know, as professors, we've got to dress uh, professionally. Um, it doesn't mean a tie, but you still have to wear a blazer and, a, a, you know, a, a, not a suit, but you've got to look professional. So I've got this closet full of... <laughs> 
<laughs> full of my uh, so i every time you see me i'm wearing a t-shirt or something like that but when i go to work i try and look professional so you might say oh eric i don't uh, um i don't recognize you when you, when you're going to school pretty that would be great thank you mary hi uh, john could you please share your textbook english syllabus i will in the future I, I definitely will not right now but in the future hello from ukraine you're really great pleasure to be in your sessions thank you so much um it's a pleasure having all of you here um bm uh, concerning listening tasks do students listen from a tape recording queen no not not really although uh, no they just listen to the teacher um sometimes there are cds where you, you know with conversations that they listen to for some of the activities um i guess you could think that's a tape recorder um yeah so sometimes we use the book and we use audio from the the book and the exercises um yeah so sometimes i i can't say no no actually definitely sometimes bm uh we use um some audio uh, especially you know when you use your the computer to teach tasia have you been to russia i have i've been to vladivostok before but i would love to go to st petersburg and see the rest of russia too rocio hi from peru thank you very much because you always talk about those daily teachers -ish. i can practice my listening while i'm doing my chores at home blessings oh, it's so nice to hear yeah uh, um uh, Ro uh, Rocio, I love listening to things while I'm doing the dishes or I'm walking around or driving my car. Uh, I like to put on some some videos to listen to. Tasia, thank you for sharing your time in Thailand because I wanted to know if it's a nice place. You understood me well. I'm happy I could have helped. I, I, I'm not sure if I explained it very well, but I tried. Uh, Mani Lad, hi, sir. Hi. I have to go, Eric. Uh, Paul, thank you for coming. Um, Carolina. Carolina, Carolina, how to present a good presentation. Actually, that is something I wanted to focus on. Um, I'm definitely going to do a video on how to do a good presentation because, you know, I try and help my students. And before, I think I actually, um, a couple of years ago, I was, um, I had to help my students with presentations and I created, I did a lot of work on helping them. Well, um, yeah, engage your audience, smile, um, and make, a, don't, uh, when you make a PPT, don't make it about the PPT. Don't use too much writing, use visuals if you can, um, always bring it back to yourself so that this, they look at you. I mean, you're the most important one, smile, move around and make eye contact with people, uh, individuals for three seconds, three seconds. Sc don't just scan the room but if you make eye contact with people you don't need to make eye contact with everyone in the room but it feels as if you're being more personable if you do it like that um yeah be engaging um so many things i want to say um i, I also did some things on how to prevent you know um uh, public fear of public speaking I've, i'll definitely make a video about it carolina uh, uh because it's something i'm very interested uh, i want to speak english with you i, I definitely do uh, i mean thank you so much katia uh, eric what certifications usually uh, it depends if you want to teach english but um yeah, it depends uh, if you're from one of the English speaking countries. I think that's the most important. And then, yes, you need a university degree. And it also helps if you get like a te TEFL certificate, which also helps. Loon, hi, sir. Afa Tambata, how about coming here to Madagascar? Maybe I'll think about it. Uh, Maung, hi. Uh, Marta, thank you so much. Uh, how far are we? Oh, we're almost done. Thank you very much. Uh, it's easy to understand. I'm glad to hear that. Uh, do you think it's good to use? In yes, it's very good to use English only. Tasia, it's good enough. Mario, have a lovely week. Uh, many teachers tell their students. Mm -hmm -hmm -hmm. Okay, uh, guys, um, thank you so much for joining today. Uh, yeah, so I'm going to cut my hair tomorrow. I'm going to get surgery on my finger. Uh, maybe soon. Um, I'm going to finish up all the videos I have to finish up with. Uh, you can, and then what else? I'll start working on these videos I've been promising for ages. Everyone, I hope you have a lovely week and um, I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.